Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be speaking today on Bill C-474, an act respecting the seeds regulations presently scheduled for second reading. The intent of this bill is to amend the Seeds Regulations Act in order to, quote, require that an analysis of potential harm to export markets be conducted before the sale of any new genetically engineered seed <coughs> is permitted. Mr. Speaker, the wording of this bill is very simple. In reality, however, its content and potential ramifications are tremendously complex. If enacted as it is currently worded, this bill risks wide-ranging, unintended, and undesirable consequences. The member who tabled this bill stated it is required in order to prevent potential damage to Canadian export markets by genetically modified organisms. He stated in this House and elsewhere that he developed this bill largely as a reaction to an incident that occurred last year concerning Canada's flax exports to the European Union and to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Specifically, the member referred to a case in Europe that arose in July 2009 when it was discovered that Canadian flax exports were unintentionally commingled with the GM flax known as Trifid. The presence of Trifid flax was found first in Germany in cereal and bakery products, and its subsequent tracing to Canadian shipments resulted in severe consequences for our flax producers. The EU, the market accounting for approximately 70% of Canada's flax exports, has a zero tolerance policy toward non-approved GM products and closed its borders to Canadian flax in September and October 2009. The first question arises directly from the incident this bill is attempting to address, and that is, if this bill had been the law at the time, and a study of the potential harm to export markets by Trippet flax seed had been conducted, as is suggested by this bill for future GM seeds in Canada, would the knowledge gained from that study have prohibited Trippet's exportation to the European Union and hence prevented the resulting market disruptions for flax producers in Canada. Mr. Speaker, the Trifid flax that was found recently in Canadian flax shipments to the European Union was never approved for sale in Canada, though developed a decade before the incident. And as such, any export market harm study as recommended in this bill, regardless of outcome, would not have prevented the commingling of Trifid GM flax with non-GM flax seed. This is a critical flaw in this bill that must be considered by this House, that it would not have prevented the very incident it wishes to address. Perhaps the real question is how to properly keep non-approved GMOs from entering the food system in the first place. This bill does not question the legitimacy of GMOs as an agricultural tool. I am aware that for some, GMO use is an all-or-nothing issue, but let's be clear. The debate on this bill is neither about support for nor opposition to the use or manufacturing of GM agricultural products. Those issues are not addressed in this bill. It must be noted that the bill, as it is currently worded, may actually present serious barriers to this burgeoning Canadian industry and potentially risks our competitive advantage in this cutting-edge field of research and development. Canada is the fifth largest producer of GM crops in the world. Canola, for example, from which is derived commonly used canola oil, is one major Canadian success story. 90% of the crop is genetically modified, with the majority of our production going to export markets. Soya beans are another example. 70% of soya beans are genetically modified, with the rest grown conventionally. Further, there is compelling evidence that the smart, safe, secure application of GM food science will play an important role in the international community's continuing attempt to address the crisis of world hunger and malnutrition. The United Nations predicts the world population will peak at 9.1 billion by 2050, and that means the world will require a 70% increase in food production to meet the rise in demand. We must be ready and able to employ every resource at our disposal to assist in meeting this challenge including building agricultural capacity in developing countries. And that effort will likely hinge on how willing the developed world is to enhance and apply cutting-edge food and agricultural technology, including, in part, GMOs. The next question that arises when considering this bill is what are the potential consequences for Canada's existing regulatory framework and agricultural industry, whether intended or unintended, should it become law. It must be noted 
that the bill, as it is currently worded, actually holds the potential for a drastic departure from our current regulatory regime. The Canadian regulatory system that protects our health, safety and environment is one of the best, most comprehensive and respected in the, in the world. It is important to point out that these regulations are based on sound science, not the more subjective and fluid economic factors that this bill proposes. In fact, the vast majority of developed or exporting countries' regulatory regimes do not include an economic analysis of the genetically modified organisms' effect on local and international trade. Canada's reputation and success as a trading nation has always depended on the consistent application of science-based decision-making, and our substantial international credibility is due to the fact that we have always relied on a science-based approach concerning health, safety and environmental issues. During the BSE crisis, for example, Canada aggressively and successfully lobbied countries to make decisions to open international borders for Canadian beef based on science, not unfounded fears. We did not stop beef, beef production or sale because certain countries rejected our meat. In addition, the wording of the bill does not define the scope or meaning of the words market or harm. One potential scenario is that a majority of importing countries may accept a GMO product and a small minority may reject it. Hence, an entire world market could potentially be lost to our producers because of the theoretical risk of a GMO product being exported to the non-accepting market. We look forward to having this issue clarified through debate in this House and possibly, pending the outcome of that debate, potential examination at committee. Further, the prohibition measures that this bill would put in place in the Seeds Act would only prevent a genetically engineered seed from being cultivated in Canada by our own, our own agricultural industry. That very same genetically engineered crop could still be imported into Canada for processing or use in feed, since these uses are regulated under different acts that are only considered that uh, only consider the health and safety aspects. Australia. Australian states have implemented bans on planting genetically engineered crops, but are still allowing genetically engineered crops to be imported for use in food or feed. It is possible, therefore, that should this House choose to adopt Bill C-474, we will have only restricted the competitiveness of Canadian farmers, and our markets will remain open to foreign GM seed imports. Mr. Speaker, before I conclude, I must it must be said that there is a clear consensus that the strengthening of our export markets is absolutely critical for the health of the Canadian agricultural industry. From seed developers to growers to processors and shippers, and indeed to all the honourable members of this House, everyone agrees that preserving our export markets is essential to the overall success of Canadian agriculture. Yet the, yet the huge success of our export markets to date is due in part to two relevant facts that our agricultural production is generally accepted across the globe as safe and of high quality, and that because self-imposed barriers to industry, unless absolutely necessary for the health, safety, or true protection of market access, have traditionally been avoided in Canada. It may be true that there is not a one-size-fits-all approach, which is what this bill seems to advocate. The obligation upon any government is to, of course, err on the side of caution, but to base those decisions upon a most rigorous scientific scrutiny. The issue the member attempts to address with Bill C-474 is vitally important and deserving of attention and discussion. Our reading of this bill, as it is currently worded, is that though well intended, it has the potential to create far more difficulties than if the problems it attempts to resolve. We will support sending the bill to committee so that there is the opportunity to more fully scrutinize the issues and make a well-informed decision on whether or not this bill should go any further and report back to the House with recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh,